we all know the petticoats are the most important thing to a coordinate. But how do you know which one to get? Take me for example, I've been wearing Lolita fashion for more than 13 years and my everyday petticoat is still very, very flat. I have a lot of trouble finding an affordable petticoat that has a lot of good poof and is also plus size. So I did something a little bit crazy for over a year. I spent hundreds of dollars to buy 15 petticoats and then I spent countless hours measuring them, comparing them, putting all the information together to make the ultimate petticoat compare test. So with that, you'll be able to find the petticoat that is perfect for you. My name is Joelle and you're watching Fluffy Kawaii Joe, the channel where I try to show you that everybody can be kawaii. I make two Lolita videos a week, so if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I will quickly explain how I ranked every petticoat and how I measured them and compared them, but if you want to skip that, feel free to use the chapters in the video and go directly to the results, or you can also click the link in the description and go read Cupcake Kamisama's blog post about it, where she gives even more info on the petticoats. So I bought some of the most popular petticoats and I also added some that I already owned and Cupcake Kamisama is also collaborating on this project and she submitted two of her own petticoats to this big compare. Of course I could not buy every single petticoat that existed but this is a good start and I might do a round two with even more petticoats in the future. So I started by filling all the available informations that I had. Brand, name, price, size advertised, number of colors, cuts, things like that, and I added the links. Just so you know, the final price might be significantly higher if you take into account shipping that can add 10 to 25 extra dollars to the price of the petticoat. So then I started by measuring the real length of each of the petticoats and I noticed that most of the brands take into account the waistband into the length, which shouldn't be because it doesn't actually support your dress from there and so it is not useful for the poof. So actually the real length might be shorter than the advertised length. It is usually recommended to have your petticoat five centimeters, two inches shorter than your average uh, skirt. And I reviewed mostly short petticoats that are 45 centimeter long for sweet Lolita. It is usually recommended that for sweet Lolita, you get a petticoat that is bell shaped or cupcake shaped. And for classic Lolita, usually the dresses are longer and you can get a petticoat about 60 centimeter long and usually the cuts are A-line. The difference is that in petticoats or hoop skirts, for A-line, the hoops are increasingly uh, bigger to make a straight line, and in Cupcake, the top one is a little bit wider than in A-line, and then increasingly wider to make a rounder shape around the top. With all the research that I have done, I have noticed that the actual shape of the dress doesn't really mean anything based on the shape of the petticoat and so you could have a dress uh, have a very a-line shape or cupcake shape based on the petticoat and not necessarily the dress so i will go into more detail about that in a different video then i counted the number of layers tiers the height of the waistband and the total number of fabric used for one layer of the petticoat that amount of fabric varies a lot from one petticoat to the next, but also the material has to be taken into account to make the poof of the petticoat. Here's a quick tip on how I measured the length of the fabric. I used a hair clip and then I kept sliding the petticoat around the measuring tape until I would reach the hair clip again. Then I measured the sizing. This is the most important thing because if the petticoat is too tight, you might be able to fit in, but it might be very uncomfortable and even dangerous to wear. I measured the relaxed size of the elastic and the maximum stretch it could go through. And I notice a lot of difference compared to the advertised measures. And that might be because the elastic can age over time and be a little bit more relaxed. And then of course I ask you what are the most important things for you when you buy a petticoat and apart from sizing and poof, a lot of the other things can be looked at at the fabric. Is the waist going to be scratchy? Is it scratchy when standing or walking? Will it damage the dress over time or will it peel? And how long the poof will last? 
I was able to measure the comfort and softness of all the petticoats, but I had no means to test the longevity of a petticoat over time and the durability of the poof. So I asked you guys for the kind of top ones if the poof lasted long after you got it, and most of the time it did. But we can already tell you that petticoats out of voile or chiffon, the poof is made by just the quantity of fabric itself because the fabric is not stiff. And so you can do anything with those petticoats. You can roll them in a bowl, you can store them in a tote bag and the poof will not deflate because it's just the sheer amount of fabric that makes the poof. Whereas the petticoats in tulle and organza are usually poofy because of the stiffness of the fabric and that may fade over time. So it is usually recommended to hang the petticoats inside out or you can make it dry on the open umbrella and use spray starch to make it last longer. So now what everyone wants to know is what petticoats is the poofiest. So for that I picked three dresses. The lightest one is a dress in chiffon from Lady Sloth. It's also the longest one and the widest one, meaning that there's more fabric to make the skirt part and so then more space for the petticoat under it. So that means that the petticoat needs to be very poofy to fill it all. So the next one I picked is from Angelic Pretty. It's the medium weight, medium amount of fabric and standard length. So the last one I picked is from Borderline. It's a very heavy, thick skirt in velvet and it's also the shortest one and the one with the less fabric so that means that it has less space for petticoats but it also has a built-in petticoat. And Cupcake Kamisama is using the following dresses to test her own petticoats. To find out the poof I measured the distance between where the dress is pushed and the stand of the mannequin and I made the average of the three dresses and the alone petticoat. So I am ranking the petticoats from the less poofy to the most poofy and I will also display more information about them on the screen. And Kamuke Kamisama is going to do a different ranking but if you want to know more for yourself I will have the chart with 30 plus data points for each of the petticoats available for my patrons and for my channel members so then you can see for yourself which petticoat is the best for you. We wrote that the petticoat is plus size if you can get it in custom sizing, if it exists in many different sizes or if it can stretch over 110 centimeters. For reference my waist is 83 centimeters. For comfort we considered five criteria and we gave one star for each. Is the material soft? Like is it not scratchy against your skin? Is the waistband comfortable? Is it flat? Is it a nice elastic? Is it not scratchy? Is the petticoat comfortable when sitting? Is the petticoat easy to use while going to the bathroom? Is it easy to grab all the poof with one hand? And lastly, will it not peek out? And uh, do I need to not think about it when I take pictures? Like how low maintenance is it when I want it to look good? If I need to readjust it all the time to look good in pictures, it does not get the point. So let's start with all the petticoats. This is the three layer tiered pannier short length by Bodyline. It's the shortest petticoat in the whole list. If you look at the measurements, it says it's 32 centimeters, but on the picture, it looks like a legitimate normal petticoat and it looks way fluffier. So I wanted to add it so you are not uh, scammed by it. Technically, it's not a scam, but they don't show a lot of legs. You can see where my bloomers arrive. So it's so, 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 so short. And it's of course one of the less fluffy of all the petticoats and the fabric is really weird. And also it's not lined, but it comes in a lot of different colors and it's uh, three different sizes. And this is the 2L, which is actually quite comfortable, but still don't use that petticoat. This is the crappy petticoat from Milanu. You can find us also on AliExpress and I wanted to include it to show you how crappy this is. So 
It has several layers of tulle and when shown in pictures it could look puffy but actually it's not, it's really really not. And it has a lining but I guess that it might be scratchy against your leg if you're sitting or against your dress. So yeah this is really crappy and it's super super tight and it has um, velcro in the back that they completely open and remove. The only good thing in this petticoat is actually the drawstring. It's actually a very good drawstring that is not too uh, thin and works well with the elastic once the velcro is open. So actually the waist is not the worst part of this petticoat, but the poof is totally non-existent and it's scratchy, so this is not the petticoat that you want. Even though it might be cheap, you can find petticoats with around the same price that are way better, so don't go for this one. This is the three layer ultimate volume pannier from Bodyline, and it's in tulle, so because it's in tulle, it actually can push the dress even further than it actually is because this layer here is quite thick and actually it has more proof than measured uh, straight when in a dress. So interestingly, quite a lot of proof, but it's in tool and the lining is not long enough. So when walking and when sitting, you will be scratched by this material that is very thick. This is the Daily Petticoat by Diamond Honey. It has only one layer that is very ruffled and this is why it has a lot of holes and bumps and the, the poof is very very inconsistent and it makes a very ugly shapes on the dresses because the dress can go in all those holes and it's not a really flat way of having a consistent poof. Also, this material is quite scratchy. This is the Puff A-Line from Doll Paradise. This is my everyday petticoat. I wear it all the time. It's not that poofy, but it's pretty wide. I don't know if it's because I'm wearing it all the time. Because of that it's not that tight so I can wear it comfortably but sometimes it also moves down and start peaking because as you can see it has an over layer of tulle that has a very cute lace trim but this is way lower than the actual petticoat, at least six or seven centimeters lower and so the lace tend to peek out of some dresses. And also the elastic is quite thin and it turns so it's never flat. Other than that, it's a very good everyday petticoat. This is the Sweet Bell shape from Classical Puppet. It's very beautiful because it's in pink. There is a gorgeous lace, but because of this very long lace, it's actually very longer than the other petticoats and it actually peeked out of two of my dresses. Other than that, it's very tight and I don't think it exists in other sizes, but it's so, so soft. The lining comes a little bit very high actually, so it does not cover your legs, but the fabric is so, so soft against your skin. This is the adjustable petticoat from Tulutulu Lolita. This adjustable crinoline lets you change from A-line, cupcake and daily with a lower poof. What is great with this one is that you can actually adjust to two arcs here on your crinoline. So this one is at the maximum and this one here I put it super super low so it's an A-line shape, but I want to make a cupcake shape again. So see here, I have those two things and I can just slide them back together. So this is actually the biggest that you can take. And see that now this circle is way bigger and makes a more cupcake shape. And this is just one petticoat. So you have to know that the second circle is quite high. So it means that when you walk, it can be visible. You can see this shape on your dress, but also this has one layer or like the arcs are covered here and there's another layer 
of overlay so I don't think that the dress can actually fall into the cracks of the crinoline like other ones. The one I'm wearing is a design replica from Taobao but the original from Tulu Tulu Lolita exists also in plus size. This is the Jennifer Petticoat by Malco Modes, sometimes referred to as the 582. It has two layers of soft chiffon trimmed with a chiffon ruffle. The hem of each layer measures 19 meters, which means a lot of volume that will not deflate over time and there is enough fabric to fill the dresses evenly. The petticoat has two channels for the waistband elastic, so it can be longer or shorter and the shorter length works perfectly for Lolita. Moreover, the waistband elastic has a button on one end and buttonholes throughout, so that as the elastic stretches out over time, you can keep adjusting the petticoat to fit you comfortably. On Malcolm Mode's official website, it comes in 5 sizes and 27 colours. However, Malcolm Mode's is a popular brand for rockabilly fashion and for dancers, so you may find it in your local shops specialising in vintage slash alternative fashion or in dancewear shops, thus cutting down on shipping costs. This is the Hybrid Poof Monster from Me Likes Tea. This is the most expensive petticoat that I reviewed and this is the one that I hate the most. I spend a lot of money on it and you can see I ordered it to, true to my size and it falls because it's already too big. But it is supposed to be used with this drawstring. It's very hard to tie it, especially if you want to keep the same tightness. And then you can see the, the ribbon, how thin this is, and actually that means that instead of having all the weight of the petticoat spread out on this thick waistband that was supposed to be elastic, that was supposed to be close to my body, it's actually all the weight is on this super super thin line now of this drawstring which is really bad and really uncomfortable so either it's too big and it falls or it's too tight on a very very thin line I think this is the breaking point of this petticoat which is great in itself but it's so uncomfortable that I actually never wear it even though I've been having it for two years and yeah for me this is really what's breaking it the Milex T petticoats are made to order and you can pick the fabric that you want, the number of layers that you want and your special size. But uh, as you can see it's not really good even if you order your size and also I've worn it only three times and at some place the seam is already torn. This is the Violent petticoat from Diamond Honey and even though the proof is not too bad I realized that since it's only just one layer, super super ruffled and really wavy, it has some places where there's like holes and bumps and it doesn't really have a very cohesive, flat uh, poof. It really has some places where there are holes and bumps and it does not look pretty on the dress. So this is the woman three hoop petticoat skirt from Aliexpress. So it's a hoop skirt, it's not a petticoat, so you can see through it. And it's very, very A-line. I had tested petticoats that are A-line with my sweet cupcake dresses and it was fine for most of them. And this one you can see that here, the dress has difficulty to be filled with this shape. But also it's quite long and so it was picking out of two dresses. This is the lighter skirt, but you can be sure that the other ones, if the hoop skirt is already peeking out, it will definitely go out like very often like that, not basically for this one. I'm not very used to, to hoop skirts, I'm usually having petticoats and I feel like it might easily come to that for some reason because it's very light, like the, the dress could fall inside of it if there's wind or something and Definitely when you walk you will ha end up in situations like that. So some hoop skirts have a layer of cover over it that would uh, make sure that things don't happen. And maybe when the fabric is thick enough in the dress it won't happen. But 
I would not wear a hoop skirt for a dress that is very, very light and very short. I would be sure the hoop is shorter than the dress, but also, I don't know if you can see here, but sometimes you can see the arc, like, hmm, when I walk, you, you might see this coming in front, and yeah, like, like now I can see that, and Personally, I think this is very ugly and I really prefer the poof that is more even with the petticoat. This is only me and I guess that if I was in a place where it was so so hot, I would be happy to have emptiness under my dress so I can have more airflow. And please disregard the LED string that is on my hoop skirt for a future project. This is the Rainbow Violent Petticoat from Aurora and Ariel. This one is the regular size, but they do also custom sizing for a very small extra fee and they recommend that for everybody whose waist is over 80 centimeters, which is my case. I've worn it a whole day for a meetup and this one was a little bit too tight. It's gorgeous in Rainbow, this is really, really pretty. You can uh, pick if you want like all the layers rainbow, like the top layer rainbow and the, the middle ones are, are white. I think it's a little bit cheaper. Even though there's a lot of uh, curves and ruffles here to make this, uh, the fact that there's so much fabric, I did not experience holes and bumps like in other petticoats like that. So this one kind of held it all together in the dress. And it also exists in a length of 60 for the more classic longer dress. In this case I had ordered the cupcake one but they actually sent to me the A-line that is exactly the same shape as the white one. This is the Romantica Boletto adjustable hoop skirt by Fan Plus Friend. It has four layers of tulle and organdy, shaped to look like flowers, and covering a steel hoop built into the hemline. This means that the soft fabric covers any harsh lines that the hoop itself could create, as well as helps add volume at the top for a more cupcake shape. At its maximum, the hoop skirt measures almost 1.5 meters in circumference, and it can be adjusted to be smaller to fit smaller dresses. In theory, this is very easy, all you need to do is slide the ends of the hoop to overlap more or less as desired. However, in practice the opening of the hoop channel is quite small, making the process pretty fiddly, while the ends of the hoop are quite sharp so you need to be careful not to hurt yourself. Because of this, I personally tend to keep it on its maximum setting and use different petticoats for dresses that are too small to accommodate this one. Moreover, while the decorative tool looks pretty enough to be worn as an outer layer, the weight of those flowers is not evenly distributed and it droops in places. This means that the petticoat peaks out and requires constant readjusting or going to the extra effort of tacking the decorative parts onto the skirt more securely, because the string used to adjust the waistband to your size is not the most secure and the petticoat tends to slide down over time. This is the Wunderwelt Original Volume Petticoat. It's a very, very fluffy and poofy petticoat, very good, but it only exists in one size and it's a little bit tight and for some reason the elastics keep not being flat and rolling and it's so annoying. I cannot make it stay flat and it's also then very uncomfortable because the weight is less distributed. So for a very similar petticoat, the Aurora and Ariel petticoat is very similar to this one, has a very nicer waistband and it's way cheaper. This is the Ultimate Violent Petticoat from Aurora and Ariel. It's very comfortable, I have nothing to say except that this one is a little bit too tight and it does exist in Plus size, if you pay a little bit extra, they can make it uh, bigger for you and they recommend a plus size for people with more than 80 centimeter waist. And even though there's a lot of uh, fabric that is ruffled to make the poof, I didn't really see holes and bumps in the dress. So I think this petticoat holds very well the dress. 
It exists in several different proof levels. You can uh, choose the quantity of fabric that you want and it also exists in a longer version of 60 centimeters. So I finally know which petticoat I want for me. I want the Aurora in Ariel full rainbow color in cupcake shape in the catwalk 20 meter length of fabric and in the custom sizing option. I picked this one because it's one of the poofiest, it's the most beautiful, it's very comfortable and it is plus size. And also depending on where you get it, it's actually quite affordable. So I'll make another video where we'll try to compare all the Taobao resellers and Taobao itself and we will find out where it's the cheapest and where it's the easiest to order that one petticoat. If you want me to review and compare a petticoat that was not in the list, please send the link in the description and I will add it to the list of the potential future petticoats that I will compare and review. If this video was helpful and if you want to support me buying even more petticoats to compare, please consider joining my Patreon or my channel membership. You just have to click the join button next to subscribe or the link in the description. And with just one dollar per month, you are helping me so much already. So thank you so much for considering it. So remember, I have a folder for all the patrons and member with all the photos of my petticoats with three different dresses and all the data for all the petticoats, all the measures, all the comfort and everything. So you can find out for sure which one is the best for you. So see you there and remember, everybody can be kawaii. Bye bye.